Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the ADP Panel Pro from Aaron Dowling. So in the last video, I talked about how Lumenzia was the newest plugin to me, and that is no longer the case. A couple of my subscribers recommend that I go check out the ADP panel, which I'd actually never heard of. And so I did a Google search, got in contact with Aaron Dowling. He was kind enough to send me over a copy uh, really quickly, got all the videos, and now I've been cramming for this particular test for the last 24 to 48 hours, watching all the videos and stuff. So uh, keep in mind as you watch this that this is more of like a free first impressions video. I wanted to release this with the other videos, but I've only been living with this particular plugin for like 24 to 48 hours, but I feel like I have a pretty good handle on it. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. So this is the ADP panel. It's smaller, kind of like Lumenzia. It's a little bit larger, takes up a little bit more space than Lumenzia, but it's kind of that same uh, shape. It does have three different tabs with different stuff inside of it. Up here we have our luminosity mask creation area. And you'll notice by looking at this that it's set up pretty differently. Most panels have things broken up into your lights, your darks, and your midtones. This one, we have our zones, and then we have our darks, our lights, and our midtones in between. And at first I was a little bit skeptical that, that this would create the luminosity mask that I needed to create. Uh, but you'll see like when we create a lights adjustment or a lights uh, luminosity mask, I can go in here and alter it to be pretty much what I want. So if I wanted to be more restrictive towards the lights, I just start sliding these to the right and we can still get all the same selections that we would need only with a, from a single button. Um, once you've created your luminosity mask, you only have a couple things you can do with it. You can create it as a selection and then apply it to an adjustment layer, or you can create a curves adjustment layer. Now, I could be wrong on this because I'm not a computer scientist, but when, you, when you're in a panel like this, assuming that it's a 16-bit luminosity mask panel, which I'm not positive if this one is or not. I know Lumenzia, Instamask, uh, TK Actions, they're all 16-bit. But the minute that you make a selection from your, your current luminosity mask, it becomes an 8-bit because it saves it as a selection as a channel. That can only be an 8-bit selection. And I'm I'm not a computer scientist. I could be wrong on this. So really the only thing that we can do with this, this selection that is still going to be a 16 bit selection is to create a curves adjustment layer. We can't create a levels adjustment or a dodge burn or anything like that, or even exposure blend because we can't create a mask right from that. We have to select it and then apply it or paint through that selection. So it's just a small thing. I think most people would not be able to visually see the difference between 16 bit and 8 bit. But what you do get into a little bit is just a little bit of choppiness in the gradients. Um, like if we create, if we go over to this shot here and we create a lights mask, this gradient from white to gray, as we bump up the contrast, if we're not careful, we'll start getting into a very, we'll start getting into color banding and tone banding as we bump up the contrast. We won't, we won't run into that here as we're making our selection because we're still operating in 16 bit. But if we went to try to adjust that later on, we would. Um, so it's a small thing, just something to keep in mind. Definitely not a deal breaker at all. So we have our luminosity creation section here. We can also create selections based on color. So I can hit green. It's going to give us a selection based on our green. One of the things that this panel does really good at is something called subtraction masks. So a subtraction mask is basically when you have your initial selection, let's say a lights selection that is covering all of our light tones like this. And then you subtract a second luminosity mask from that to protect some of the tones. So a common use case would be to select all the bright tones in your image, except for those brightest tones. That way you can add contrast to your image without blowing out those highest, uh, those brightest tones. So if I was to go into our subtraction mask area, it gives me this little dialog box. And I think this dialog box 
is really the key of what's different about this. Raya Pro does subtraction masks as well, and I feel like this is just a much better, much easier way of going about it. The way this works is you, sub you select the initial luminosity mask you want to create, and then you select what end of the spectrum you want to subtract from it. So if we select lights and lights, and then hit execute, it's gonna bring up our first dialog box where we can modify this to the tones that we're wanting to affect. So let's say I want to affect all of the mid-tone to bright tones. Then I hit OK. Now this next dialog is going to allow me to select exactly the tones that I want to subtract from that. So if I want to select just the brightest parts in the water, I would select, I would move these and shift this over to where it's just selecting the brightest tones. Something like this. And then hit OK. That's going to give me my selection. Now let's say I want to uh, darken my shot in general, but I want to maintain some highlight pop. I could just grab a curves adjustment layer, bring this down, and it's going to bring down the exposure of everything except for those brightest tones there. So I could do something like this. I really like how he's implemented the subtraction mask. That's something that kind of sets this panel apart from the others. It has a lot of the same stuff that the other panels have. We get we have our dodge burn layers and all of our most common adjustment layers. But one of the things that's different about this is it also has this auto blend feature, which is pretty cool. So if we have a shot like this, where we have this bracketed sequence where I have a shot for my brightest highlights, the majority of my sky, and then my darkest shadows, I can go up here and I can hit auto blend. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically uh, give us some control on how it's going to blend all of this together. There's semi-auto, semi-auto reverse, and then blend if. Um, so up here we'll select three because we have three shots. We'll hit semi-auto and hit execute. And now it's going to go shot by shot and we're going to do our best to blend each shot together uh, naturally. So as I slide this these settings around, you can see it's getting, it's including more of that darkest shot and less of that darkest shot. So we slide this around until it looks natural. Something like this. And hit OK. And it's going to create that mask. And now we're blending in our darkest one. So as I slide these settings around here, something like this. Hit OK. And so when we hit OK, it puts them inside a group. And you can, if I hold down Alt and show you the luminosity mask that it created for those, that's how it went about blending these together. And I think overall, that's a pretty decent blend. Um, I could probably do a little bit better with a luminosity mask, but we can always go in here and decrease the opacity of our, of our darkest one, kind of brighten up that sky. Maybe even decrease the opacity of our middle tone. Something like that. Pretty cool feature. I don't know that I would use it, but I think it gives a nice, simple way of exposure blending um, for those that are kind of new to exposure blending. In our other tools tab here, we've got stuff like glows and Orton effects, frequency separations. You can save your own actions inside of this tool. That's nice for adding watermarks and stuff like that. One of the tools that I kind of did like, if we go back over to our waterfall shot here, was the detail extractor. It's tone targeted, so we could say, let's bring out some detail in our highlights. And I can hit lights here, and it's going to create a high pass filter with a luminosity mask attached to it. That way we can target just the just the part of the shot we want. So here we have our high pass filter. If we hold down Alt and click on our layer mask, you can see it's targeting those brightest tones. And if I turn this off and on, you can see it's just subtly brought out a little bit of texture in our water. We could even crank up the effect. It's a high pass filter, so it, you know it's got that high pass filter look. I'm not sure that I love it, but it definitely does its job. There would be there would be times for that that I wouldn't mind it. So one of my biggest critiques of Lumenzia was that it didn't have a web sharpening feature. ADP panel does have a web sharpening feature. You select your size and then you can sharpen, convert to sRGB and save for the web. A great set of features, although I'm not sure that I love how it's implemented, not compared to the TK actions. When 
we so let's say we want to resize to 2000 pixels. It doesn't create a new file. It does it to the same file you're working on. You want to make sure that you're not doing this before you actually save your, your, your base file because it's altering your base file. TK actions will actually copy to a new file. That way you're not modifying your, you know, your actual master file. Um, also notice that we have 2000, but we don't have 2048, which is the size that Facebook wants you to upload to. It's a small thing. You can get around that by clicking on size. And then on the tall end, we can go 2048, hit OK. Now that's going to be the right size to upload to the best quality to Facebook. The sharpening that he does is pretty good. Um, seems a little over the top, but you can always back the opacity off. Me personally, I definitely prefer the TK Actions sharpening panel to this one, but it's nice to have, especially if you don't have TK Action. I think overall, this is a really solid panel. It has everything you need. Um, it's really quick and snappy when I go to create luminosity mass. It's very fast. It's pretty much an instant. It's as fast as any of them. The layout is kind of nice when you're creating your luminosity mass, that how it grays everything out, simplifies what you're looking at. I like that. Um, what I don't like is that we don't have a levels adjustment up here. And I wish that we had more options after you create those luminosity masks, because what you do with that luminosity mask is the most important thing. And I wish that there was a few more options up here. It doesn't have to be the entire adjustment layers um, panel, although that would be nice. Why not just move that up here? That way you can select from any of those after you create your luminosity mask. It also has this auto adjust section, which I played around with and eh, I don't really love it. Um, basically you, Go in here and you can slide your, you can target your highlights, let's say. And then you can start sliding around these, these settings. And it's basically just ways of dark, playing with exposure, playing with contrast while selecting and working within a tone group. It's kind of a cool idea. I would have to use it a whole lot before I got used to it though. It's a little bit clunky in my personal opinion. So I think it's laid out great. I think it's very fast. I think it's quite powerful. Um, I just wish that we had a few more options once we create those luminosity masks. And I wish that in our web sharpening section that we could uh, have a 20 by 48. And I don't really love the type of sharpening that's being applied. Um, other than that, I think it's a great panel. And those people that have this and are used to it, there's not really a need to migrate to something else. I think that you guys have a really solid tool that will do everything you need. This is the ADP panel. I think it's a great tool. As far as how it compares to the other ones, the next video is going to be all about comparing the four different panels to each other, talking about strengths and weaknesses, and giving my recommendation to the different types of users that are out there. So make sure you check out that video. Hopefully this has been useful if you've been looking at this panel, and we'll see you in the next video.